Hey everyone, my name is Morgan or Queen Morgie and I'm an Australian content creator and Rocket League player. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences both as a streamer and as a player at the 2022 Commonwealth Esports Championships in Rocket League where the women's team came home with a bronze medal. Um, the point of today's video is to open up the discussion about what it is to have a career in gaming. You know, whether that's going to be a full-time career, whether it's a part-time career or a, even just a hobby. Um, there are so many opportunities that can arise from streaming um, and I'm keen to talk to you guys about my experience and what I've done. Um, obviously Rocket League means a great deal to me um, and I'm very grateful for where I am today. I wouldn't be where I am without it. Um, so yeah, keen to talk to you guys about it and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be talking to you about is my experience as a player and going to the Commonwealth Esports Championships 2022 earlier in Birmingham this year. Um, so obviously there was a lot going on before the actual event in England. Uh, we did have a Gold Coast Finals event uh, where the women's team flew up and played a show match on stage. And the men's teams, there were four men's open teams, uh, they battled it out for their spot to go to Birmingham. Uh, that was really cool because I think um, I can speak for all three of us on the women's team when I say that none of us had played on stage before in that kind of an environment. Obviously there's a little bit of pressure with people watching you, you know, the crowds cheering, the atmosphere is just intense and it's buzzing, but that's really cool. Um, and definitely something you should look forward to if you're wanting to play and be in that kind of environment. Um, I thought it was really good because it gave us the experience of that before we went to England. Um, it took off the pressure a little bit. We had a bit of a taste of what it was like to be up on stage um, with a lot of people watching you. Funny enough, when you are on stage, I think personally, I was a little bit nervous beforehand. Um, but when you're up there and you've got a noise cancelling headset on especially um you don't notice the crowd as much and you're you're playing a game you love and you're really focused on it and just nothing else kind of matters in the moment you you don't feel the eyes on you as much as you think you would but in saying that it was still really good to have the experience beforehand um in the next photo here this was us departing sydney um getting ready to start a very very long trip to get over to england um, and then once we were in England, in this photo here, this is us getting together to take some team photos before our matches started. Um, here's the women's team at the front here. That's myself, Fabulous and Pink Jelly. And then we have the women's Dota team here and the men's team at the back uh, for Rocket League. This photo in the bottom right here was our first group stage game. That was against Canada. Um, we did lose in the group stage. We were very tired um, and definitely didn't, I guess we didn't expect the pressure, um, but that was good. It was a good learning experience. And ultimately at the end of the day, we ended up uh, playing Canada in the finals and we ended up winning. Um, so it was definitely, definitely a good start. Like, you know, win or lose in the group stage, um, it's all experience. And it gave us a bit of a, a bit, bit of an idea about what the competition was like and how we were going to um, proceed going forward. You know, you take away from your losses and you learn things. Um, and yeah, that was, that was really good for us there um, before we went into the finals. We did play England as well, um, and England who ended up winning, coming first and taking home the gold medals. They're a really, really strong team. Um, we did give them, give them a bit of a run in the series. Um, they beat us as well, but um, really, really glad to have played them and had that experience. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, I will talk about that more in the next slides. As I've mentioned, um, going over as a player and being in England brought a lot of really cool opportunities with it. Aside from the actual matches we needed to play in the group stage and in the finals, um, I thought this was really cool and something I really wanted to share with you guys. But Confetti had a brand new stage set up um, and we got approached and asked if we could play a show match um, to demonstrate the new arena. This was really, really cool. This was amazing. The stage setup and everything, the monitors were 360 hertz. Like we would never have had this opportunity otherwise um, had we not been over there to be playing for Australia. So I just wanted to share with this with you because I thought it was really cool. But this is the setup here. We were playing in this little section and I believe it was, it was the Welsh team that we played on the other side here. Um, there was a big audience. Um, again, it was just another opportunity to, you know, calm the nerves another taste of what it is to play up on stage before we hit the finals. Um, and yeah, I just, I thought this was really cool. I just wanted to share it with you guys. So this is us here. Um, yeah, and I, I guess I'll move on to the next thing. 
So everything I've shown you so far, the group stage games, the show match in the Confetti's new arena, that was all in Nottingham. So now we're moving on to Birmingham where we had the, uh, the finals, I guess. Um, so this was really cool when we walked in on our first day. We didn't have matches on the first day. This was a day for, our, I guess, our media day. Um, but walking in and seeing the stage was incredible. Um, I can't explain like how exciting this was when we all walked in and sat down and it was just like, it was just a wow moment. Um, seeing, yeah, the setup on stage, um, big trophy in the middle there, as you can see. Um, yeah, the crowd was just buzzing and we all sat down and we listened to a bit of an intro um, before we moved on to our media. But um, yeah, this was really cool. Then we had, I think everyone had to go into hair and makeup before we went into our media. Um, but this is where we, <laughs> where we took some photos. Um, this is something I thought was a lot of fun. There was, you know, there was your typical setup with like lighting and smoke effects and everything like that. We had to pull some serious poses and some funny poses. Um, but that was, yeah, that was really a lot of fun. Um, and then we, on the right here, I have a photo where we sat down for an interview. Um, and yeah, they spoke to us about, you know, what we were looking forward to in the finals. You know, do you think you're going to win? Do you think it's going to be a tight game and everything like that? Um, I think when we spoke about it, we, we were pretty confident. You, you've got to be confident when you're going up in these matches. You can't sit there and think, oh, no, we, we're going to lose. Um, you've got to think from it, think it from it of the perspective of, you know, we're going to win this. Um, so, so we did sound a little bit confident. We did think it was going to be a tight game. Um, our opponents in Canada were really, really tough. The girls are amazing players. They've been playing and content creating for years as well. Um, but we were, we were really keen for it. Um, and again, it gave us another opportunity to speak to our experience as being women in the scene. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think women are quite a underrepresented, uh, underrepresented category in esports. You know, you don't see many female players. Um, so I guess one of the things we touched on was having a separate female category in this event was really cool. Um, Ultimately, I think, and this is just coming from my opinion, I want to compete in opens. I, I want to compete with anybody, you know, regardless of gender, anything else, I want to be a good player full stop. But in order to get there, I think it was really cool to have the women's category. I think it was almost necessary to have a women's category to give us a safe space, one, to be players in the scene, and two, it gave us a really cool opportunity to grow and get a taste for it. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's hard for women to break into the scene. So I think this was really cool and something a lot of the interviewers touched on quite a lot. Um, so we got to speak quite in depth about that. And it's something that personally, I hope going forward continues. I, um, like I said, one day I hope, you know, we're all playing in opens, but for now, I think it's really cool to have that women's category and have that degree of separation for us. Um, it definitely encourages women a lot more so you know if you're a young girl looking to break into esports and know that there is a safe space for you um and know that the in the world of esports we're creating opportunities for young girls to be able to play and to break into the scene we we want everyone represented you know regardless of gender regardless of where you're from we want everybody to be able to play you know if you love the esport you love the esport um so yeah that was really cool and Guess we'll move on to the next slide. Now, this was the most exciting day. This was game day. This was our finals match for third place against Canada. Um, so these top photos are all just showing us coming onto stage, setting up, getting ready for the games. Um, before we started the games, again, had another interview, talked about, um, you know, how we think the match is going to go and everything like that. Um, this is myself and Mush, one of the Canadian players. I think we both captained, I captained the Australian team, she captained the Canadian team, I believe. Um, you go up and shake hands at the start, but you know, we get along really well and just have to give each other a big hug. Um, and that was another really cool thing about going over to England is um, we met players from all different regions. Um, we get along really well with the Can Canadian girls. Um, Mush has actually moved to OC. At the moment, she's living in Australia, so we've been, we've been playing together, um, and we're going to catch up soon for a coffee. And you just you make so many friends from experiences like this. I talk to like regularly talk to players from like both the men's players and the women's players from you know from Wales and Scotland and Canada and England. Like 
we've all stayed in touch and we've made friends for life, which is just, yeah, it's so cool. I think it's really cool. Um, but yeah, that's, that's us in the middle there. And then here's us setting up for the match. Again, mid-match. I think this might, <laughs> might have been mid-match, us checking our comms on something. And then after we won the match, this is us getting a photo here. Again, Fabulous, myself, Pink Jelly, and Darren, who managed our team. Um, and just some more photos after the match. We were stoked with the win. Um, I think the games were really intense. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys some of the gameplay shortly. But the games are really intense. And like I said earlier, being up on stage is just... it. You think it's going to be really, really daunting. But it's so cool. And once you get set up on stage, you know, once you've got your headset on, these were really, really noise-cancelling headsets. We couldn't hear a thing outside our comms. Um, and then, yeah, there was a massive crowd here and you just, you don't see any of it. You've just got your head in the game. Um, I'll admit I was a little bit shaky. My hands were a little bit wobbly, um, as you do, but you just, you don't notice anything else and you're just, you know, you've got your head down and you're keen to go for the win. Um, so yeah, that was, that was our experience playing up on stage and it was so emotional once we finished the game, you know, our, um, our team, our managing team came up on stage and, you know, we cried and we hugged and everything like that. Um, and it's just one of those once in a lifetime experiences that I'm so, so grateful to have had. Um, it's, you know, obviously being a player and still being in the scene, I'm, I'm still wanting to do things like this going forward, but I think this is really cool. And like, I, I know I touched on this earlier, but being at the Commonwealth Games as a mainstream event, um, was was really interesting we when we'd be walking around the streets of birmingham you know we'd duck out and get a coffee or something like that um we'd have locals come up to us and say you know what sport are you playing and we'd say esports and they'd look at us a little bit confused and they'll say sorry esports and we'd say yeah video games like we're playing rocket league and so many people had no idea that this was a thing um so <laughs> it was interesting explaining it to people but just the excitement on people's faces when you're saying when you'd say video games are in the um, in the Commonwealth Games now, you know we had a lot of people come in and want to see what was going on. You know they hadn't you know seen live esports before, so I think it really drew a lot of attention to it. And I hope going forward esports grows as a category, and I hope that it does become more mainstream because you know I I have people in my life who don't play Rocket League, they don't play video games full stop. You know you could look at my family. Look at my mom, who doesn't has pretty much no idea about it, but she'll support me still no matter what, and she'll she'll watch events like this because she's interested in it. Um, she doesn't know much about it, but I mean, like other friends in my life as well who don't play video games, um, they're really keen to see this grow as a category, and I think that's really cool. So I thought I'd show you guys some gameplay as well. Um, this is our bronze final match against Canada, and this is the last thirty seconds of our series. Um, so this is where the women's team won the bronze medal, and I will show you guys what happened in the last 30 seconds. Let's see what the Canadians can do here. They are really not managing to develop any goal-scoring opportunities right now. Australia just looking to cement the lead they already have, potentially expand it to another goal. Just slow playing into the corner. That is incredibly professional play from Habulous. Just killed another eight seconds or so. On the clock, Queen Morgie sends it down, down. And that is going to be the winning goal. Four goals to one for Australia. And they will be our Commonwealth Esports Championship bronze medalist. Huge moment in that series. Huge moment in the match and a huge moment here at the Commonwealth Esports Championship. Canada had just seconds to come back. Australia holding on, relying on their defense and then able to break out, push on, secure the victory and secure the bronze medal for Australia. So this is a really cool moment. Um, obviously a really cool moment. Um, but this was just an amazing experience. I know I've said that about everything so far, but this is all that it led up to. Um, and I'm so proud of our team and, you know, how we did. Um, I guess I hadn't really touched on this too much before, but all the training we'd put into preparing for the Commonwealth Games, um, you know, so many scrims, so, so many scrims. Um, our coaches, we had two coaches, a mech coach and more of a mental coach um, helping us along the way. Um, and then just a lot of individual training, trying to hone in our skills and make sure we were up to scratch to play the Canadian team 
um, it all led up to this. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit more of what happened afterwards, just like a few hugs and a few, and you know, congratulations to the Canadian team as well on such a tough performance. Um, and you know, I'll shoot to the commentators a little bit to show you kind of like what happens after the match, after you, you know, finish up on stage. But this was, yeah, it was just, we were in shock, I guess. Um, <laughs> you see us stand up after the match and just not know what to do with ourselves um, because we were just, yeah, we, we knew it was going to be tough. We, like I said earlier, we were confident and, you know, you, you have to go into it thinking we're going to win this. Um, but I, yeah, I can't reckon, recommend this opportunity enough to anybody wanting to go into esports. This is, this was so much fun and obviously having a bronze medal to show for it's pretty cool, but just the experience and the atmosphere was incredible. So I'll play a little bit more and show you what happened. Um, Let's speak to it as well. Up, ladies and gentlemen of the ICC, we have our women's bronze medalists in Rocket League at the Commonwealth Esports Championship. What a stunning performance from Australia. They have done so well. And honestly, an incredible series. The first series that wasn't a sweep that we've seen all weekend. So this was our management team. Yeah, hugely Obviously lots of tears and hugs. Canada able to fight back Australia, reversing fortunes of the group stages. They talked about how they were feeling much more comfortable this time before the series started, rather than the group stages where there was some jet lag, there was, you know, some yep. copium involved. And, <laughs> but here they are looking confident, looking comfortable. And I have to say that confidence rewarded. And congratulations to the now Canadian team for how well they did. Well they, did. they did amazing, honestly. Did. It was so I tough. I have to say, I'm so impressed. And they're such lovely girls. They look outstanding as well. They especially impressed me with how well they were able to keep their mental game intact. That kind of mental resilience just so so valuable but it just wasn't enough because well what do you do when you come head to head with an australian team that is looking that good but that's the yeah i guess that's the end of our series um following that obviously we had a medal ceremony where we went up on stage and received our medals um i had a couple of images of that earlier um but yeah that that was the process of the games um and that was our final match so i'm really glad to have shared that with you guys um and that i guess that kind of concludes my the what we're talking about as my experience as a player um or kind of i guess more in the competitive scene um and now i'm excited to share with you guys i guess kind of a a softer version of um of a kind of i guess more of my hobby or my career in esports um and that will be kind of more of the streaming and content creation thing so I'll touch a little bit on that now, um, but yeah, that's the end of the Commonwealth Esports Championships talk. So I guess one other thing I will touch on with you guys is more so the content creation side. Um, so if you're looking for a career in esports or like I said, whether it's something full-time, part-time or even just a hobby, um, content creation is another side of it that you can look to get into. Um, so a lot of content creators will be streaming. A lot of them will stream on Twitch, which is where I stream. Um, and, and then, yeah, you can, you can branch out onto social media platforms. I know a lot of streamers like myself will have Twitter, um, Instagram, you know, some have Facebook as well. Some stream on Facebook as well. So it kind of depends on what suits you best. But, um, I personally stream on Twitch and it's something that I really, really enjoy. Um, <clears throat> the really cool thing about streaming on Twitch is that it opens up a lot of opportunities as well. Um, if I hadn't started streaming in the first place, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to go to the Commonwealth Games. Um, I wouldn't have met my teammates. Um, I wouldn't have met a lot of people in the community. Um, I don't think I would have met my coaches or anything like that. Um, so being able to branch out into the community is really cool. And um, like I know I can only speak to the Rocket League community in terms of experience, but the community is really tight knit. Um, Everyone knows everyone when it kind of comes to more of a competitive level. Um, all the streamers know each other, the women, all the girls, um, we all know each other as well, really well. Um, I guess another thing to mention is the girls and I are a part of a, um, of a community called the Oceanic Women's League or the OWL. Um, that was founded by one of my friends, Pepsi Cola, who is also an amazing Rocket League streamer if you don't know her. Um, definitely check her out. But um, I've started helping with that too, along with a couple of other people, a couple of other admins, um, Jimmy and Lethal are helping with that too. 
and it's just kind of growing the women's scene, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> that's how a lot of the girls and I know each other and that's how we got to playing together. Um, we play six women's and we do tournaments and that kind of thing as well. Um, I won't go too in depth into it, but if you're a girl and you're listening to this, like reach out, come join the OWL, it's such a cool thing. Um, but as I'm saying that I wouldn't have known about that or I wouldn't have gotten into that if it wasn't for streaming. I wouldn't have gone to the Commonwealth Games if it wasn't for streaming. I wouldn't be where I am in terms of Rocket League if it wasn't for streaming. So this is kind of where it all started for me. And as I said, this is an absolute passion of mine. I love going live. Um, I love, you know, chatting to people while I'm streaming. I'm very talkative. I'm very extroverted. Um, so sometimes kind of sitting there and playing games can be, if I'm just by myself, it can be quite quiet. Um, but then when I started streaming, it was just like, wow, I can, I can talk while I'm playing. I can chat to people. I can, you know, make new friends and meet new people. Um, so this is where it all started for me. Um, I won't go too into de detail in terms of like videos and that content, that kind of thing. Um, but if you're not too familiar with Twitch, it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you've got an about section, you can put a schedule down, um, you include, you know, all the socials and stuff here. Um, and then you, you know, you have your VODs and your videos and stuff. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show you a couple of clips maybe to show you the type of content I create. Um, <clears throat> a lot of streamers will try to get clips of their gameplay and then, you know, you can take those clips and create a montage or create a video, you know, upload it to YouTube, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, do whatever you can to kind of spruik, spruik yourself and show your gameplay. Um, but this is a really good way to, like I said, kind of start a career in gaming. If you, if you start through streaming, it can create so many opportunities. Um, these are, I guess, a couple of my clips that I'm going to be using soon. Um, for, <laughs> for content, ignore my face in these. Surprise myself sometimes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of these things you can kind of save down and use for social media and use for, you know, your own marketing and promotional purposes. Um, this is what my stream looks like when I'm live. Um, but yeah, I guess that's, that's Twitch and that's content creation. Um, and then from there you can do a lot of things with, um, like say, orgs for example, you can get picked up by an org. Um, I've got some news with that personally, I won't share it right now, but I guess stay tuned. Um, but yeah, you can, there's so many opportunities that arise through orgs as well. You know, you can meet other streamers, meet other content creators through the orgs, um, get opportunities to, you know, work with peripherals and partners and whatever like that. Um, you can do events and, you know, go, whether you're with an org or you're not with an org, go play in tournaments, you know, Rocket League in particular, I know, and a lot of other games as well, will have um, lands and open events and tournaments that you can sign up for. Um, I know they've done, a, Rocket League's done a couple at Fortress in Melbourne. Um, there's going to be, you know, some coming up in Sydney and Brisbane and whatever like that. So wherever you are, know that these opportunities arise for you um and yeah streaming's a good way to get noticed um and definitely something i recommend if you're considering streaming obviously wait until you're of age to if you're younger and listening to this video um but and there's you know there's pros and cons that come to it but definitely something i'd really really recommend you know to kickstart a career in gaming so that's everything I have for today. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you and congratulations for making it this far. I know I droned on a little bit, um, but I just, I cannot recommend these experiences enough. Um, having been through it all myself, it's just like, I look back at myself in, when I was in high school or when I was a little bit younger, even, even in uni. Um, and I never ever would have thought that I would have been in this position that I am in today. Um, if somebody told me back then, you know, in a few years time, you're going to go to England, you're going to go to Birmingham, you're going to compete at the Commonwealth Games, I would have been like, sorry, what? Oh, what am I competing in? You're going to compete in Rocket League, you're competing in eSports. I just, I wouldn't have believed them. Um, but it's just the nature of the way that eSports is developing and it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, and, you know, it's not what it was years ago. It's, it's, like I said earlier, it's opening up to the wider public. It's becoming a part of events that are, are bigger and better and not necessarily specific to the game itself. Like, like I said, with Rocket League, there's RLCS. And of course, like if you're really into Rocket League and you really want to aspire to be a pro player and play in RLCS, then by all means, like go for it. I cannot recommend it enough. Don't put esports or gaming down to something 
as just a hobby. Um, it can be a bigger thing for you. It can be a career for you. Um, but in saying that, like I said, also, you know, you've got events coming up like, like the Commonwealth Games and that kind of thing where it's just going to get bigger and bigger and there are going to be more opportunities for you. Um, I know something I didn't really speak too much about before, but you know, if you're not looking to be a player or you're not looking to be a content creator either, which are the two kind of, um, I guess, careers or roles we covered, you can work for orgs, you can, you know, work in marketing. Um, my other role is, you know, I work as well at the AEL, the Australian Esports League, which you guys are going to see me in other stuff, I guess. Um, but that's more of a marketing and community management role um, because I still want to do stuff like that and help continue to grow the industry as well as, you know, I'm still going to put my hand up when events like this come up, when when I have an opportunity to rise where I can play at an event like this or where I can content create and do bigger things with that. Of course, I'm still going to go for that. Um, but just there are so many avenues open, open and available to you. Um, so if you're a younger kid and you're listening to this, um, go for it. That's, that's all I can say is, is go for it. Whether it's you know, playing or content creation or working within the industry, go for it. Um, and you know, if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask away. Um, but yeah, don't, don't put gaming down to just a hobby if that's something you want to pursue. It's such a big and bright future for you and I cannot recommend it enough. So um, I'll definitely be talking about this more when the opportunity arises for myself to be speaking about this to you guys. Um, and until then, play well, train hard, and keep doing what you do. Bye.